how you can engage in a much prudent way with the vendor conversations as well as with uh, the client interviewing. Now, these are all uh, free training tracks. Uh, it's our way of helping you and, and giving you a platform where it helps you to engage yourself in corporate America and, and it's in people investment is what we are looking for. Um, as I said, uh, why we are unique because there are diamond dozen training institutes. Uh, well, as I said, uh, you know, you will see majority of these training institutes are there uh, basically asking for small money or some money and uh, give you some lip service uh, training course material, which otherwise also you will find on YouTube. And then they are done with that. Nobody really focuses you on giving you uh, a kind of a uh, career focused pathway wherein they are engaging in a much meaningful way towards uh, building your career or relaunching your career. And I'm happy to say uh, that Strategies Consulting is one of those few companies which really walk that extra mile towards uh, not only the mere training, but also uh, along with the uh, simulated real-time projects, we help you prepare your resume towards that particular technology track, as well as uh, help you towards vendor and client interview preparation. Our job does not end there. Often, uh, many of you will be uh, struggling initially in your project work and strategies consulting and our training and support team is always there in a standby mode wherein we are helping you towards uh, facilitating uh, you in, during your initial days of the project work so that uh, you know whenever you are in a difficult situation and a crisis situation, uh, you are able to ask for a timely help. And uh, with our Google groups, Telegram groups, and WhatsApp groups, uh, that help is readily available. As a part of training, also many of you will be part of these uh, Google groups, uh, Telegram groups, and WhatsApp groups. So you already know uh, the like-minded people who will be surrounded with you. And uh, it just makes it easier and convenient for you to ask for the help instantaneously. Uh, it is our humble effort, as I said, you know, towards reducing the unemployment in the USA and uh, uh, Today, as far as you know, I see here the people, some of you know me personally, um, you will get a good overview on cloud DevOps, okay? It's like watching a movie trailer. While watching the movie trailer, uh, you make a decision whether it will be a good movie or not, right? So you will get an enough uh, backdrop of uh, what this entire cloud uh, DevOps environment will be and what the majorly most popular tools will be used in. After the training is done, uh, you can keep your questions and answer session post training so that uh, Ravi and uh, Raghav, these are the two trainers we have, they'll be more than happy to answer any of the questions you may have. Uh, all our training are archived on our website. If you were to go www.strategies.com, S-T-R-A-T-Y-G-E-S.com, or you may send us an email at training at strategies.com. Those of you who have seen the flyer, you will have this information. And by all means, you could uh, follow up with your additional inquiries using that email. So as I said, we have a two member trainer team, uh, Ravi Pandey and Raghav Dange. I welcome them uh, to this training program. Uh, both of them have uh, real time, extensive experience working in cloud DevOps field. Uh, we will be covering uh, both the majorly used uh, products, which is the Amazon AWS, as well as Microsoft Azure. And um, Ravi, uh, it's all yours, Ravi Pandey. You can uh, uh, take the session from here. Thank you all for listening. Uh, thanks a lot, Dave. It, it was really, you know, great introduction, and you know, it was really, you know, help us throughout the session. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, pardon me for, you know, doing this thing on your weekend because uh, I know you're all, you know, tired with throughout the week. What all, you know, trainings? What all, uh, you know, uh, working you are doing? Uh, so it's like uh, try to uh, basically uh, understand this. Uh, I'll keep it light and simple. We, we are trying to talk about DevOps 
and let me share my screen so that you can understand what we are you know basically um, going to you know do today we'll start with uh, yep uh, could you see my presentation i believe uh, yes you can see yes. okay great no problem yes. so today we are uh, going to talk about devops okay so let, let's try to understand what do you mean by devops first to start with it's basically a development operational methodologies we are talking about here okay in good old days we have started from something like waterfall we used to you know capture requirement we used to build requirement documents and there is a basically step by step process now as the times have changed we move to agile agile is basically a very flexible kind of uh, you know development methodology where we normally get uh, you know connected with the client try to be close there, there are certain principles for agile as well and there are various uh, type of streams there are various type of you know um, what you can say uh, types of agile i'll say there's from this pair there's extreme there's a need for each and every you know problem that's what we've developed to. and then we move to a level where we, we are trying to uh, basically understand how we can improve in cloud age because since 2008 2010 we are migrating online so now we are talking about everything online like you know uh, whatever we do whatever we do in terms of development we purchase we do our day to day to day job and everything it's uh, moved to online be it a mobile be it something like you know a typical reading as well I means we do uh, have you know uh, normal books with pages and hard covers and all but today we have ebooks which are really smaller in size easy to share and everybody can read at their leisure I means you can be traveling in a bus sitting back in a car and try to you know read some manual try to read some you know whatever notes you've taken throughout the day or you can just review your to-do list in a typical ebook or typical you know a small mobile app right so now we are moving mobile so for mo moving to a mobile age we are trying to understand the tools of project management here right it's not just the project management it's basically a operations of the whole it uh, product services or projects that's what we are moved to online thing so we are talking about the development operations taking online taking cloud way right so we are trying to understand how we do it how we are moved how we are migrated and how we can adjust or adapt to that right now for this we need tools for this we need various certain uh, extra things to be done right because when you say remote when you say my data is sitting somewhere else right it's like you'll be more cautious it's like you know say your girlfriend is at uh, california you're sitting in new jersey you want to be more cautious you want to have your you know cameras on all the time you normally do video calls rather than normal calls because the facilities available right now something like that so you have your server you have your data server you have your application server you have your development or you know uh, support team sitting in la you are sitting in new jersey and you're trying to adjust you're trying to get acquainted yourself with the overall operations so how do you do it that's what we are going to learn today so we are trying to understand whenever you move to a mobile platform where you move to a remote platform how to cope up with that that's what the overall devops is all about and we are trying to get acquainted with that what are the tools how we migrated how we you know need to understand the best place in the market how to cope up with them what are the services and so on and so forth so we try to get aligned with all the corners of this operational or what you can say remote operations right and operations means not just specifically id but the product operation the service operation if you're trying to provide a service like amazon right you sell online you try to provide a service like walmart you sell online so for that how we migrate to that level what are the tools we have used how do you basically take yourself to that level that's the whole ball game today we are discussing about right and i'll try to keep it open discussion so that whatever you have you can ask me just wait for me when i say if you have any questions let me know and then you can throw up your questions right and then i'll try to answer it as the, the best knowledge as i have till today okay so let's get on with it and uh, we'll st uh, start understanding how we reach this level to start with okay so i'll click this thing yeah it works okay now as uh, they will clear um, you know clearly and crisply explain what strategies is doing for all uh, you know building some employment uh, unemployed youth uh, to help all entrepreneurs as well we do help universities to build up curriculum to build up good you know technical backbone to take the 
guys to market, right? That's what you call. Take the overall resources to a market so that they can do the best possible way, best possible scenarios, use their basic experience, instinct, and whatever they love to do and put them in a market so that they do whatever they best at. So how to enable them, how to enrich them with the knowledge, that's what we are doing right now. And this is not just the training. This is basically the knowledge enrichment. We are talking about wisdom. We are talking about taking the human being to a level where he can really stand in the market. He can excel in the market. That's what we are talking about. So we do help the candidates starting from the educational background, educational, you know, um, say degrees or whatever he have and build or take him to a level where he can start working. Means also we help them throughout his work as well. We do support them. Right. If you have anything like you learn something like, let's say, Google Cloud or you, uh, you know, learn um, machine learning and you have some <coughs> you have some basic, uh, you know, uh, challenges at work, you can still call us and we'll help you out. That's what the whole ball game is about. So we don't just leave them after interview. We do help you throughout the interview. We do have some questions bank with us. You do have some good case studies to be presented. Uh, after interview to your client so that he can also improve his architecture as well. So we are talking about quite a few tracks here. You're talking about quite a few angles to a given personality when he goes on job and try to do or try to excel there. And that's what uh, the whole, you know, training is all about. So I'll, I'll you know, uh, walk you through uh, the quick, I think 20 odd slides I have here for you. Uh, I'll just move on. So what are tracks? What are we talking about? What we do in DevOps, right? So we have a DevOps developer. We you normally develop script, you, you know, develop, um, uh, let's say time-based job, like uh, some data backup should trigger at 10 o'clock or nine o'clock in the night or 12 o'clock in the night, depending upon the, you know, server uh, workload and so on and so forth. So these are developers. Then you have DevOps architects. We basically give a complete overview of what is where, what is needs to be where, how to split the DB, how to split the product, how, what, where the logical layer will stand, where the UI layer will stand, which development methodology or which development, uh, you know, tool set should we use, should we use Android, should we use Java, should we use this uh, pattern, that framework and those things. So architects basically gives you those things. And then there are administrators. What do you mean by administrators? Administrators basically controlling the whole flow, right? They, they control in, they control out, so there are database administrator, there are there are website administrator, there are server administrator, there are cloud administrator as well. We'll come to it one you know one by one, frankly speaking. So let me hear it out when I say um, uh, this is like you know kind of throwing big words to some somebody of you, many of you from IT, so they'll understand what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to uh, you know make sure we understand the tracks, we understand where I need to go, which path I can walk on, and then start walking on that start understanding those things. So this whole, you know, overview session, we are trying to address all the tracks which are available for a DevOps, DevOps guy who wants to work on DevOps. I believe as of today, it's a need to understand DevOps for everyone who works in IT, who works in operation, because this is what we are talking about, the remote operation overall, right? So we will try to understand the different tracks, what are the differences, if not micro, but on a, you know, micro, um, uh, bigger level, so you can understand where you want to stand, where you want to be, and then we'll try to walk you on that path, try to hold your hand, try to help you there, right? So yeah, DevOps administrator. So these are the administrators. These basically administrator the user, administrator the database, and so on and so forth. So they know which guy to let in, which guy to be, you know, bad. Um, there are security concerns nowadays, which normally, uh, you know, addressed by administrator as well as architect. Right. So, well, security is overall, you know, everybody's ball game today because of the challenges, because of the, you know, proliferation, the overall threats we get day to day. So administrator is one of the main character or main, you know, use case you play overall here. Then we have analysts who normally analyze which is the better fit. Do we need to really migrate where we stand? There are some gap studies. There are some understandings of newly products which are available in the market. Could we use it? Could we not use it? So previously, like I said, analysts were the guys who used to analyze before requirements stay. Nowadays, we need to have the analysts throughout our project so that if there's a new product come, like let's say Google TensorFlow, if you know about let's say uh, six years back, Google came up with this brilliant idea called TensorFlow. This basically helps you to pump in and pump out the oral, you know, machine learning libraries, the, you know, decision node type of libraries to take your product to a level 
to uh, you know to avoid all bottlenecks which used to create for you know the library accessing for something like a small device uh, internet of things iot device uh, like a walking robot right so what do you need you need to have the tensor flow there are you know best use cases available we'll walk you through that throughout the training and we will enable the analysts to the level where whatever products stable available in the market and let them know the pros and cons that's what we are talking about then there are data scientists these are the you know really big upcoming market where we understand we really make sure whatever you do the analysis as far as the data or analysis as for the back end products or services go do it scientific way what are the ways available how to do it best possible way, which are the tool set to do continuous you know data analysis so that you know what needs to be done in terms of um, let's say threat processing or you know vulnerability uh, um, uh, prevention and so on so forth so there are lots of ways and means by uh, for a data scientist today he is really enable with all type of products all type of uh, tools to get the things right in place and do in the most efficient way right and then we have solution architect well devop architect is basically talks about the overall uh, architecture of the operational scenario the solution architect is basically <clears throat> there to understand a typical solution a particular product a particular service or an uh, on a larger scale as well okay so these are basically few tracks which available which can i <coughs> relate to or rename to right now and we'll discuss these things in detail throughout the course if not specific but within the training type of um, you know uh, inline training uh, type of discussions right uh, does anybody have questions uh, at this moment okay i'll, I'll just go ahead now about me uh, i'm rohinder pandey I'm around 26 plus years of experience. I worked in US, Europe, Middle East, South Asia, and so on and so forth. I'm in corporate training for the last 16 odd years. I've done my B computer technology, then MBA, now doing LLB. We do training on various tracks, and you know, <coughs> basically uh, through strategies, we are really uh, trying to go to a next level of helping the guys on job uh, in interview and so on. So, so we are talking about a complete you know, life cycle help here, or, you know, helping throughout the uh, guy from a typical educational institute to a, you know, on-job desk and keep helping him till he needs our help. That's what uh, Raghav uh, is basically working as a cloud migration architect for last uh, six year, years with me. We had done quite a good project uh, on some banking as well as logistic domain. And he'll be helping me out about selecting cloud, uh, cloud partners, how we can basically, uh, what are the partners uh, available and their services. Okay, so I'll move on again. Now, we talked about DevOps. Now, try to understand the elements within DevOps. When you say operational cycles, in previous, you know, um, I'll not say previous slide, I'll talk about previous uh, way of working or doing the IT project management. We have something called waterfall. So we used to basically go to a requirement, then analyze, design, develop, test, and deploy, right? That was a single execution. And then if there are any updates, we used to again repeat the cycles at the end of the software project or you know service or uh, solution, whatever you want to call it. But nowadays, there are changes in life. There are new solutions available. There are new requirements. There are the whole ball game changes with the new products coming into it and you can do it really easily you can really adapt to a you know uh, or change your life cycle with the best uh, you know cost effective way uh, manpower effective way and so on and so forth so how to adapt that that's what we talk about in terms of devops to basically enable the whole operational team to understand whatever new comes to market and how we can adapt to it right so we'll try to basically see how we can adapt what are the tools available what are the steps to be taken so these are basically few steps we normally follow so we have a plan we have a code that's construction way we normally build those things we test it then we deploy operate and monitor we also do these things in very smaller cycle today we call it sprints <clears throat> that's an agile you know way of uh, calling it agile topology you can say basically so these sprints we keep it really simple max about two weeks or three weeks not more than that so whatever solution, whatever new products or whatever uh, new enhancement <coughs> coming in our way, we adapt them. We get adjusted with it. We get adjusted within days time, not within weeks or months time. So that whatever we got, we can enable it 
the best possible way and start adjusting to it building our good roi building better rois day by day okay so that's what the whole uh, devops is all about right i'll just move ahead now as uh, as we talked about building right the building or enhancing or constructing is a continuous process nowadays so there are teams there are various teams working within our organizations for building services building products building solutions so how to get adapted to them how to get in line with them so that we can support them we can enhance their working we can really enhance the overall you know production flow so that whatever output comes is the best possible output best quality uh, quality enabled output and that's what the whole continuous building or improved continuous building within devops talks about this is really important slide most of the most of the devops architects do you know ignore this but building is the most uh, uh, what can say crucial element in the overall you know uh, devops operational scenario and we have everything uh, you know building uh, or supporting this uh, continuous building process because we are here, here building integrating testing redeploying again testing again redeploying and those kind of you know stages uh, which basically uh, uh, keeps up continuously building this or uh, continuously enhancing our product services or solutions throughout the life cycle that's what the whole devops supports devops uh, really concerns about and this is really important step and we should uh, think it or we should understand this thing uh, really or uh, really the best possible way i'll you know go ahead again about you know uh, well uh, there could be some you know contradiction or there could be some different uh, what you can say thought process on what are the key indicators right we normally call it kpi so why we choose devops that's what this slide talks about so we we are talking about reducing the failure trying to or uh, reacting to a failure i'll say overall and average time to recover from failure is the least in devops when you go to devops this is the most important key point indicator why we move to devops so we uh, you know we reduce those things from a waterfall to agile or uh, uh, you know scrum pair extreme whatever you want to you know take as a methodology in agile we have reduced the times let's say from 10 to um, 4 or 3 in agile we took it to 1 1.5 1 or uh, further reduced to that in a overall percent royal way right so we are trying to reduce the overall uh, time to recovery from a failure time to recovery on a typical failed test case that's what we call in software development you know uh, uh, project uh, uh, topology so we are trying to reduce our failure we are trying to reduce our cost on the failure or the effort spent on the failure we try to reduce overall uh, the shortcomings of the uh, you know uh, perfect product we are trying to build a perfect product day by day we improve it we continuously rebuild it we continuously enhance it that's why you can say various uh, you know uh, very frequent update releases now for your android for your windows as well because we try to adapt to a given technology we try to adopt your new uh, you know products or the services available in market uh, in uh, include it in our product services and build it better for the clients day by day right and then we have deployment frequency deployment frequency as i talked about we reduced to almost in days than a weeks now and we uh, really want to do it uh, daily if possible like if there are any small updates or small patch we can club it in our service or product and release it online so that all the devices throughout the world can you know enhance it access their products and start using the better product day by day than you know waiting for a week or you know waiting for years in the older you know project methodology way now we have percentage of failure deployment it's reduced considerably if you really want to have uh, gartner have really good paper on what are the percentage of failure nowadays than percent of failure let's say in 2006 2007 and it's really uh, what you can say interesting paper to read frankly uh, paper to read so that you'll understand how we improved in terms of devops how we improved uh, from let's say a typical you know old project management way even in agile and now in devops we still use agile methodologies in devops as well but overall we have all uh, you know build up uh, of various uh, tools available and various you know uh, different uh, supporting way of enhancing our product in the shortest span of time even reducing the overall time to fail uh, you know uh, time to recover kind of um, uh, unforeseen events and get it build up get it start uh, you know 
uh, replenishing the product as and fast as we can and get it overall up and running as fast as possible. That's what the whole DevOps is all about, right? And then we talk about advantages. So we have reduction in cost of quality. I believe everybody, you know, uh, most of you must know cost of quality is we, we are trying to about whatever cost we spend on recovering for our bug, recurring from our bugs, recurring from our, you know, any unforeseen circumstances and try to get it the best possible or the best quality to product or services to our clients. That's what uh, the whole, uh, you know, cost of quality. This is really important matrices. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, uh, calculated or posted or shared across the produ uh, production and service industry nowadays. Uh, we talk about uh, the quicker turnaround times, the TAT, we call about the TAT number and how we can improve it, how we can make it better day by day. That's the whole, you know, top management ball games. And we, we have to uh, be on our to, uh, you know, tools to get it up and running in as short as possible time as we can. And that's why we have now a global team. So there's a team working around the clock. There's a team in Japan, there's a team in US, there's a team in, you know, uh, Europe, there's a team in South, um, you know, Africa, where we have round the clock support, round the clock updates and, uh, you know, uh, making the product better in hourly basis and daily basis. That's what we talk about. So that's all about quick turnaround time. This normally used in support project, but uh, we, we can talk about our internal, you know, uh, taste and really uh, taste update and release cycle as well for that matters. And of course, precise progress reporting is really a need, right? And that's what the DevOps supports. Whatever, you know, process or pro, uh, uh, pro, progress you made, you should get it clubbed and report it so that whoever could understand it, uh, whoever could, uh, uh, what you can say, enhance the overall, you know, improvement can be done throughout globally within various teams. Because now we have our remote team, we have our team situated in various, you know, parts of the world. We are trying to support them overall. We are trying to basically help them to engage the overall, all the processes and projects and services. And that's how we support basically. So that's what, uh, you know, the main three uh, key indicators of KPI. These are just, uh, you know, kind of thought process which I share with them, uh, share with, uh, you know, all DevOps uh, um, uh, teams to understand what we are doing as in crux of the whole, uh, you know, implementing DevOps. So this is really important and this is really uh, crucial to understand where we are trying to walk, where we are trying to go. If you have these things uh, aligned uh, to your project methodologies, then the life is really easier. The life is really enriched. The life is really make sure whatever you do is uh, basically give best results throughout the you know life cycle of the project, throughout the life cycle of the support as well, frankly speaking. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this moment? Sir, you have questions in chat, sir. Come again, please. Couple of questions. Ravi, the questions are in the chat section, so uh, we can take okay. a few questions in the chat. Uh, let me open the chat scenario. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, how do you open the chat? Wait a minute. First question is, it says uh, we have shown a uh, few okay. different tracks of yeah. cloud DevOps developer, admin, architect. So the first question is, uh, you know, of which those several categories, the training falls under which track? Uh, we are trying. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, we are basically, you know, trying to support all those six stacks, whatever mentioned there, and we'll have the distinctions come in the latter part of overall, uh, you know, trading stage. So whatever you do, you can be an architect, you can be an administrator, you can be, uh, you know, uh, whatever in those six stacks, and they can choose upon uh, whatever they want to excel in, rather than uh, we specifying the track. And there will be some, uh, you know, uh, what you can say, uh, tweak around in the training whenever we progress in the latter stage of training. So we do support all those six stacks, whatever I mentioned there. Okay. Okay. The code knowledge is required. Is... Sorry. Uh, yeah, code I can read that. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Uh, yeah. So okay. about the code knowledge, see, there are tracks, right? If you're a solution architect, you need to understand coding. You need to understand what code does what, right? So where I want to take the product or services to. So if you understand that, then you can really make it, uh, you know, well aligned to your tracks, well aligned to, you know, uh, your way of working. So if you're in development track, then coding is necessary. That's a, you know, basic uh, uh, element we're talking about. 
whenever you are architecting, you need to understand the code, what the code need does what, but on a larger scale, if you are administrator, you are still at a you know lesser uh, degree of uh, code interactions and so on and so forth. So you mainly control the overall you know influx, outflux uh, within the operations, how to control them, how to provide access, how to provide the overall, you know, track the vulnerabilities and so on and so forth. So that's what we talked about, right? So uh, I believe that's the question right now. Uh, yeah. I'll move on to the presentation again. Uh, okay. Sure. So I need to again do the presentation. Okay. So uh, here we have. So we understood the three key point indicators, and uh, we want to make our life easier, efficient, and the best possible way. And this is how we do it in DevOps, right? So let's go into the detail, uh, how DevOps works. Now we are basically entering into the overall, how, where, and you know, uh, how to uh, go to that level, what are the tools available, how to use it the best possible way, and who will take you there, right? So these are the basically, the basic ingredients or basic, uh, you know, uh, what I can say, uh, uh, group of tools which help us to take our projects, our solutions, or our operations to a level where we can say we have adapted the DevOps available facilities or DevOps available uh, framework um, within our organizations, right? So uh, let's uh, try to understand uh, what we talk about the steps and how we can enrich them with the tools. There are around, uh, you know, 15, 20, 21 odd tools available right as of today, which are stable. There are 50 odd tools which are available, which are really in a beta stage or testing stage. They are trying to build these tools uh, as and when um, the you know shortcomings uh, came across the markets. Like uh, uh, there were tool uh, previously which really difficult to have. Uh, let's say source code libraries. Now we have Git, which really you know uh, help us uh, in building this you know uh, source code libraries. What we call source control, how to build you know create, update, and so on and so forth. And so Git is helping us out in that. Then there's the Jira. There's Marvin, there's Grill, there's Selenium, which basically used for testing. Then JUnit is also used for testing. Puppet, we normally monitor and rebuild, try to have, you know, script for uh, uh, building, deploy, and building those batches, uh, release to our server, how to release them, what are the, you know, uh, authorization, authentication services we need to, you know, build this. Then we have overall Jerkin uh, helping in our integration throughout our, you know, DevOps life cycle, right? I know this looks really complex right now, but as and when we move in, you'll get a hold of you know all these um, products helping us throughout our dev, uh, DevOps, uh, you know, uh, implementing uh, implementation framework within our organizations. I'll just move to other slide. Now uh, we understood you know what uh, uh, we do, where we want to, where we uh, you know uh, will be, and how to do it. Let's try to understand with a case study or a typical retail scenario. Uh, I, I believe everybody have visited, you know, Walmart or Target uh, in good old days, right? Mm -hmm. Even I had basically. So there was a, you know, let's say a, a corner Target, which used to service, supply, you know, 100, 200 order clients a day or 100, 200 customers a day. And which used to have, you know, all the stocks in place and all those things, right? One day, let's say Ravinder walks in and he wants to have a typical t-shirts. Uh, let's say uh, want to purchase three t-shirts with three different uh, colors, right? With a specific logo and something like that sort. So he go to a counter and say, boss, uh, I don't, I want in these three colors. I just have one at my, you know, at your store right now. So how do I can order the others two? So he's to take down the request on a, let's say paper and try to find out in within the stores, within, you know, available uh, storages or available, you know, supporting outlets, whichever they have and he used to, uh, basically put a request for procuring it to his store and so on and so forth. So then they, it used to take, let's say days or weeks, uh, most probably to get those t-shirts, uh, for you and you start using them as, as in your needs, right? This is a typical requirement I'm, I've talked about, right? Now let's think of the same retail store after cloud migration. Now what we did, we migrated the complete, you know, storages, stocks to cloud. So whenever a target uh, store, let's say in St. Louis, uh, Brentwood, want to have a, a, a service Ravindra for his new request, what he do? He just logged in on his tab or on his, you know, uh, post and check out, okay, where do I find these three colors? Let's say green, red, green, blue, blue you know, 
um, um, yellow is not a right teacher. So red, green, white, let's say. If you want these three colors, he'll just uh, click, click, click. He just do two or three clicks and procure those t-shirts to be shipped to the, his you know, location. And that tablet or that storage will give you exact time and you know, uh, uh, day where that t uh, you know, those t-shirts will reach to the St. Louis target storage um, uh, or uh, store so that he can deliver it to me. And he'll add just a uh, you know, couple of hours and then he'll tell me, boss, please come on Tuesday. 5 p.m. and you'll get all these you know things uh, at your baskets. So this is how the overall delivery scenario you know improved. I will just talk about a simple target, which is uh, I believe up to a, a IT enabled to a great level nowadays, and how the business is helped or enriched at fingertips. Then keep calling, keep processing the paper. Uh, you know, uh, working with uh, really banging your head on various, you know, couriers, uh, suppliers or, you know, shipping suppliers to get the things done. Now everything is clubbed together. It's at one point, one place where whatever you do is at in your mobile, in your tab. And you don't want to really find, you know, go to a post terminal or go to a desktop to process the whole, uh, you know, uh, jumble up um, uh, procurement process, right? So procurement is really easy. I'm just talking about a single typical process within our day-to-day -day life. So procurement is really improved to a level where it can be done in seconds than in days. Previously, to procure a simple type of shoes, type of t-shirts, or let's say for a book, it used to take weeks altogether. Now it's just click, click, click. Means even if you want books, most of the books are basically getting converted to EPUB or you know various other formats which are shipped digitally than uh, paperback or hardcover editions. So we are talking about understanding the whole migration of way of life to a cloud and getting aligned with it in the easiest possible way. That's what the Dev is, DevOps is all about. Taking your life to a level where we work digitally, so we work in seconds than in days nowadays and this is what this migration the overall you know uh, effort requirements cost effect the efficiency comes into play that's why i say devops is a need of the hour and devops will be here to stay throughout the life cycle throughout will enhance devops uh, you know uh, and it's getting enhanced itself uh, you know day in day out there's uh, you know there's a new version of puppet in the last week which is really stable and got adapted by almost 2 million uh, you know, users. If you, uh, this statistics is available on IEEE website, so you can have a look at it and understand how fast the world is changing. Let's say an Android upgrade. The 9 to 10 Android upgrade was the most easiest upgrade because it's all DevOps enabled. It's all enabled throughout the servers of, uh, you know, located in different uh, places. Previously, we used to have a cloud server, which, uh, you know, uh, club or what you can say, um, <clears throat> uh, which used to uh, access or which uh, used to work from a single uh, location, let's say be it the uh, US, be it Spain, be it Canada. Nowadays, the clouds replicate their data or cloud serves throughout the regional locality. They have, uh, uh, they have their, you know, uh, enhancement in place, which can tell the user it is really made for, <coughs> let's say, uh, Spain server, which is real or or Canada server or the local US server, which can serve her, uh, serve him or her the best possible way in the least possible time and how we can enhance this thing day by day. So we have a trend analysis going on in the background. We have our enhancement going in the background, which can get enabled by a typical AI or machine learning methodology, which enable the server itself or uh, to make it available make it in a uh, work efficiently day in day out for a given region so the server tracks when Ravindra basically travels from uh, let's say india to us or canada to us and it basically understand the normal working normal requirement of a particular user and get aligned with those users for a particular store for a particular you know um, uh, way of life i'll say overall because uh, I normally travel with all my requirements, right? So normally we keep track of all these, you know, customers moving from one place to another, how to support them, how to enhance them, how to help them, 
on a regional basis also been tracked by overall DevOps. We'll come, uh, come across quite a few tool sets. We'll try to understand how we solve the problem. But that's what the training is all about. So we are talking about a complete migration of a normal uh, detached line to connected line. And that's why we track our history. That's why we track our you know, product uh, implementation, our product alignment, our customer thought process, customer, uh, what you can say, overall purchasing uh, uh, agendas. And we build trend analysis on that. And we help the customer in the best possible scenario within the least possible time. This is the overall you know, business case. Uh, I want you to understand because this will make yourself enable what are the tool set and what it does exactly, right? Now, let's move ahead. Now, as you all know, there are, you know, um, uh, typically three different way the cloud can serve a typical, you know, person or a, you know, uh, company or an organization. So this is what we discussed about. I'll not dwell on this because I, I believe everybody knows this thing. In a cloud age, you need to understand, you know, different services which are basically given by various clouds. So we normally, you know, categorize clouds in infrastructure as service, platform as service and software as service, right? And there are these, uh, you know, horizontals which we talk about with supply by in these different type of cloud services, right? So as, as we can understand, uh, the platform as a service and software as a service has an operating system also given as a service to an end user, right? So this is what we talk about. We are migrating in a disk, uh, you know, connected environment in a gradual way. We are really enhancing our day-to-day -day customer life cycle with the best possible scenario. But we need to understand here, everything comes at a price, right? So when you need to source, so there are quite a few services uh, to be pumped in and pumped out throughout our network. So there is a, you know, cost involved of, uh, you know, network data sharing, network, network data shifting and all those things. So, uh, you know, SaaS is network heavy, SaaS is pocket heavy and so on and so forth. So we need to understand which service is the best suitable for our pocket, best suitable for our product, best suitable for our services as well. And that's why this chart is important and that's why I put it there. So whenever we try to understand a tool, we need to understand where it sits on which other services it gets supported uh, by these, you know, uh, different type of cloud services, which service provider helps us in the best possible way which service providers is doing really, you know, uh, best in the last year, which really coming up with different type of, uh, you know, service enablement. So can I can take it uh, to a level where my customer is the most satisfied with my product so that my product is the best or, you know, what you can say, shelf it so that it's get really, you know, good, um, uh, good market capture or, you know, good uh, region wise uh, market accessibility and so on and so forth. So these uh, thing, uh, these kind of uh, things which are really important for a business, uh, you know, uh, segment, which I can really analyze with these three different type of services and the different elements which are supporting, supporting, um, get supported via these services as well, right? So uh, this is really crucial to understand, but this is a bit technicality. So I'll, I'll keep it, uh, you know, in the training and we'll discuss on each and every of these segments to understand where the support of the tool set lands in, in terms of typical uh, DevOps environment day in, day out. Okay, so I'll just move to the next slide. Now, uh, for understanding uh, different cloud service provider, I've just categorized this. Um, this doesn't mean that Amazon only pro uh, you know, provides uh, infrastructure as a service. Amazon also uh, provides uh, you know, uh, software as a service. Uh, there's a bit of mix and match here. Or I'll say there are more gray areas than a clear categorization. So don't quote me <clears throat> if you feel Apache supports uh, IAS also or SaaS also. So this is basically a mix and match. And this is a kind of, um, I think, a bird's eye view, I'll say. And there are many various, you know, uh, uh, overlaps in between. SalesPro also gives us a platform because SalesPro supports overall what type of, uh, you know, uh, sales pipeline, marketing pipeline and all those things. So there are products which basically lie in between. Okay. I'll have uh, Raghav uh, explain, you know, uh, uh, understand uh, um, various cloud service provider uh, for us so that uh, uh, we can be, a, you know, the really, uh, what you can say, start understanding what we have for us uh, given by various, uh, you know, cloud service provider. Uh, so Raghav, uh, could you please unmute? Yeah. Uh, could you start on this, please? Audible. Yeah, you are audible. Please go ahead. 
just give me a minute. Uh, do anybody have any questions at this moment? It's better to speak out rather than chat because every time you know we need to switch and those things. So if you have any, um, if you have any questions, could you please uh, you know? Um, um, Nothing for now. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so I'll have uh, Raghav to start on this. Raghav, could you please take over? Yes. So basically, these are the common examples of cloud services provided by various cloud services. The Google Apps, Doc, Dropbox are the SaaS examples for which are provided by GCP, which is called like Google Cloud Services. Uh, the AWS, uh, Elastic Beanstalk, and uh, and Amazon Web Services are the basically also so uh, cloud services provided by amazon web service and uh, microsoft azure and is a well known um, uh, cloud service provided by microsoft uh, you already know uh, sir can you uh, shift to next slide yeah sure yeah should i move to next one one minute yeah the Amazon Web Service is uh, Amazon Web Service is one of the best uh, web uh, web service providers are known. Uh, Microsoft Azure and Google we already know. The, they are many uh, various cloud services provided by Google. Uh, Rockspace, GoDaddy are and many more are there. Uh, please shift to the next slide. Yeah, we will talk about Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is a cloud computing platform which provides services such as compute power, database storage, content delivery, and many more functions which will help to integrate a business. The Amazon Web Service is flexible, scalable, and reliable. And due to this, many companies are implementing in their, in their work. There is no upfront cost and customer has to pay only for what they have used. It is one of the leading cloud services provided amongst all. With the help of internet, customer can access high data uh, durable storage, such as Amazon Glacier, Amazon S3, and Amazon EBS. It is also has a high performance database, such as Amazon Redshift, Amazon DynamoDB, Amazon uh, Elastic uh, Cache, and uh, Amazon RDS. Uh, next slide, please. Sir? Hello? Yeah, um, could you see it? Yeah, next slide, please. Uh... Yeah, uh, the Google Cloud Platform. This is a platform is one of the leading cloud computing services and which are offered by Google. And it also runs on the same infrastructure that, uh, that Google uses for the uh, end user products. The Google Cloud Platform is basically used for Google search and YouTube. There are various services offered by Google Cloud, such as data analysis, machine learning, and data storage. The data store in the Google Cloud is secured and can be easily ac uh, accessible. It offers various services from infrastructure as services to pl platform as service. Google also provides a strong com commitment to security and stability, which helps a Google Cloud platform. The user is free to think about the code and feature which are needed to develop uh, without worrying about the operation side. Here, the most services fully manage and uh, details are quite easy for customer to co concentrate on their work. In this, machine learning and you use API are very easy. API also helps in speech detection, language translation very easily. So it prefers among the customers. Now, next we have, uh, next slide, please. Sorry, uh, Microsoft? Yeah, this is Microsoft, uh, uh, yeah. Azure. The next uh, we talk about Microsoft Azure. Microsoft, Microsoft Azure is the cloud computing services which is used for building, testing, deploying, and managing the application. This is pro provided by Microsoft, and this pro uh, process is done in global network of Microsoft managed data structure. It is a private as well as a public cloud platform. It uses virtualization, which differentiates the cloud uh, coupling between the uh, operation, operating system, and CPU, with the help of uh, an abstraction layer known as Hypervisor. The Hypervisor emulates all the functionality of the physical machine, such as hardware and server, into the virtual one. There are numerous amount of virtual machines available, and each virtual machine can run many operating systems. In the data center of Microsoft, there are many servers, and each server consists of hyper server uh, through which multiple virtual machines can operate. 
with the help of azure it is easily to for developers and it professional to manage and deploy their applications and services yeah uh, next slide yeah uh, thanks rago I'll, I'll take it up from here uh, rago is basically working as an architect on you know cloud service provider so he really have a great insight in terms of choosing which service is the best suitable for the business scenario so you know but there are services which are i think you know best uh, you know cost effective there are best uh, services which are uh, better supported within the given region there are services which are better situated uh, you know uh, aligned to a given platform or given uh, type of uh, you know business and uh, or be a given type of business uh, uh, solutions rather i'll say because uh, for ai i think we normally go to google services uh, for overall you know multiple retail outlets we normally go to amazon uh, because uh, Amazon is the most leading service provider in the last couple of years and it's really coming up with the best possible tool sets and you know uh, enablement but there are uh, Microsoft is best uh, supported for educational institution so we have really good uh, you know ebooks library we are really good aligned uh, uh, what you can say intelligence attached to the overall search mechanism for a given institution for a given you know uh, course content and so on and so forth so the course or the even uh, video distribution is better in microsoft the uh, like youtube uh, you know we've seen it's also uh, great in um, google but microsoft is really coming up with really good uh, you know uh, uh, service and element so um, so whenever you choose a cloud service provider you need to have a good architect to help you out you need to understand uh, you need to understand which cloud service provider really suits me they all say that they are doing their best they are really supported overall uh, throughout the globe and so, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, you need to you know really study a bit which suits our pocket, which really helps out in the same similar business solutions or business problem or business domain. So that whatever you know uh, service provider uh, we are using, which is suitable to our tools to our main business uh, you know alignment. That's really a need. So that's why we need to have cloud architect or solution architect. Who is DevOps enabled? Who is really be in, uh, really enabled with the you know all supporting tool sets for a given problem or a given business uh, you know alignment? And this is really crucial because even if you have fifty or you know tools available to you, you need to choose which is really useful for you. Then keep thinking this is the new, this is the better, this looks really good to my eye. No, no, it doesn't work that way. You need to really understand what you're trying to support, what you're trying to do and then choose the best possible scenario or best possible tools for you okay now we are going deep into the devops tools arena now we are talking about dockers there are uh, within the trading cycle we really go deep into the dockers what are the dockers what type of you know servers we use uh, how to use the clustering which region to support to because there is a store which can uh, support to whole new jersey area and just the new jersey area so i need to align my servers to you know support in those regional users than concentrate on la or then concentrating on something like midwest so that i, I need to have you know uh, support team supporting the midwest plant as well i can have but my concentration of a business or my concentration of the overall infrastructure should be for the new jersey area where i feel i can gain maximum client i can support maximum user i can support maximum efficiently for my business so that's what the overall you know um, whole ball game of dockers alignment of docker and clustering of dockers to we'll talk about so we have uh, our live projects as well in dockers whenever we train them we train them for a given region for given linguistics and so on and so forth so there's a localizations uh, involved or the local alignment or regional alignment um, really happens at the docker level in terms of devops course so nowadays the business is enabled it's it available globally but it's totally aligned locally that's what we talk about so we are trying to have even we can have a couple of really good local uh, what you can say uh, concentration centers where i can support new york i can support new jersey i can also support la or i can support the complete california so that my business is totally aligned to my customers to my clients than supporting in, let's say whole Mid midwest if there are hardly few clients right so this DevOps, this overall operation is aligned as to the business needs. And that was the whole tool set uh, basically talks about. Then we have Puppet. Puppet is basically about the configuration management. If you know good old days, we used to have really, you know, big checklist 
to align how the setup is be being done what are the you know hardware requirement how the team is sitting how the team is helping how we can deploy it to a given server when to schedule the deployment and so on and so forth but now it's done by puppet in the background so mostly you need to just uh, you know create the script you need to really you know configure the overall you know puppet environment and the uh, internal product services configuration um, you know uh, takes care of that thing so we have really great enable distributed configuration with puppet nowadays we really work closely on you know puppet service providers even uh, various uh, 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 puppet uh, good uh, you know configuration manager we have within our team which are working on live project which can help the you know um, students or which can help the trainees uh, up to a great extent then we have you know various other tools now i am going to um, uh, I, i think uh, you know i'll not talk too much about these tools there are various tools which uh, are included in the overall devops training session which helps you out Uh, to basically you know the, um, for monitoring for controlling and then we have you know various other tools there are 16 or 17 or tools we have uh, an experts with us which can help you on real life projects or uh, a real life um, you know day to day uh, uh, on your workbench as well so that whenever you have a problem we can do a you know hand holding we can enable you with the solution within few minutes so that you can start working and get uh, the obstacle away from your working path Uh, I think I am through with my slides, and um, uh, that's the you know uh, uh, that's I think uh, 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 I have not included all the tool set, but whatever we are uh, we are we are included is basically uh, it's better to understand, better to start, better to give an overview of what the DevOps is all about and what we are basically teaching, mentoring uh, for the given incumbents at this moment. Uh, does anybody have any question? thank you ravi uh, for the presentation that was a uh, uh, good overview